It's, yes, it is. It's 6 30. Um, time for the Murray City Municipal Council meeting. Um, <clears throat> I'm Diane Turner. I'll be conducting. And we'll do the opening ceremonies. I would appreciate it if you would turn off or silent your cell, silence your cell phones. That would be helpful. Uh, council members are present with the exception of Pam Cotter. She is excused. We also have the mayor, GL and Brooke, that are joining us tonight, as they always do. <laughs> and to all of you, welcome. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, and I've asked Ben Gray from our IT department to do it. Ben, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Now we're at approval of the minutes, and we have two council meeting minutes, um, sets of minutes for October 18th and November 1st, 2022. Are there any concerns or changes? No. We have a small council, so it's pretty easy to communicate. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I will go ahead and make a motion to approve the council meeting minutes for October 18th, 2022 and November 1st, 2022. Sorry, do you want to take them together? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. And I'll second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there were, the motion passes unanimously. Um, now we're at the special recognition, the funnest part of the agenda. The first is the introdu introduction of Miss Murray, Emma Robison, and Brett Hales, our mayor, is presenting. Okay, come on up. How are you? Well, this is exciting. This is Emma Robison. And Emma is our new Miss Murray. And uh, Emma uh, was uh, crowned in September? October. 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 Kat was uh, our representative there for us because I was not able to make it. But we're excited to have her with us. Uh, she's a wonderful young lady. Uh, thank you for my sweets the other day. That was of nice course. of you. You brought your little miss. Yeah. And I'm sorry that we missed you, but we were... Uh, in a meeting, um, and we got to meet her. She was so cute at the uh, lights the other day, turning on those Christmas lights. So, but Emma, we're going to turn the time over to you and welcome you and and have you do your presentation. So, thank you for being here. Okay. Um, is it working or? There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, it might just stay on Russell Nelson, but that is okay. <laughs> well, I am... Could you speak into the... Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you. No, you're good. Okay, I am Miss Murray 2023. Maybe you can see the slides. Uh, a little bit about me. I am born and raised in Murray. I went to Horizon Elementary School. I then went to Riverview Junior High and MHS where I was a student body officer. I was MAG president, so I got to work with all of the young women at Murray High School. And I also was a state finalist um, with Sterling Scholar. So I had so many opportunities throughout the Murray education system. Um, I'm a world traveler. I got to go to Jerusalem this year and Peru last year. 
I love traveling and just being immersed in different cultures. And I love my dog. He's a golden retriever and he's adorable. My social impact initiative is Serve Others Selflessly, which is SOS. Uh, this is to organize and implement acts of service. And I've already had so many opportunities to implement this initiative that I have. Uh, we look out and serve. And that's my goal is to educate children. I've already had the opportunity to go to two elementary schools and on Friday I get to go to some more and they love it. They absolutely love serving and it's, it's great to get that fire and that momentum moving. Uh, we have quarterly service projects. So this Saturday, actually, I'm having a Christmas service party. If you guys want to come, bring your kids, bring your grandkids. It's going to be so much fun. We are supporting Murray Children's Pantry. We've been going there and we're raising, we're doing a food drive for them. Heart attacking a thousand homes. And heart attacking is where you write notes on hearts. And my goal is to do a thousand homes. And so far we have 200. So we're doing good. And growing my SWAT team. So I am mentoring eight girls right now. And it's incredible just to see their progress and growth when you put someone in charge of something, how they take off and they're growing. And they're all in elementary school and junior high. And it's a phase in life where it's a little bit harder. So it's such an enlightening experience to be a role model for them. Um, is it working? <laughs> no, you're good. Oh, it's right there. Okay. And we're bridging the generational gap. So we've been going to the Abington and my goal is to take my SWAT team with me. Um, okay, I think that that is everything. We had a cute video, but if it's not- <laughs> Was it pulling as a double screen? Like monitor wise, no. Oh. No, this is. I know his grandson because I go to BYU. Oh, I'm at BYU right now and I'm pre business. I love business and I'm also looking into real estate. But the video was my first 30 days in 39 seconds. So it was just some cute videos and pictures. But I. Do you know what that is? It's okay. Thank you so much for letting me introduce myself. You guys are all incredible. We have a great Murray City Council. Uh, have any? Has anyone seen Gilmore Girls? Because this feels like Gilmore Girls. Oh, that is my show. Do you know what I'm talking about with yes. like Taylor Dosey? Oh. Yes. Are you saying Brett's Taylor Dosey? Is that what you're saying? The mayor's Taylor Dosey? Yeah, but it, but way better. <laughs> I'll have to show you a few clips, Brett. <laughs> I know. Okay, well, that's the what the video is pulling up as, so I didn't think it's working. It's okay. If you want to see the video, it's on our poster and there's a QR code. Um, Wait, what is it on YouTube? Poster. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, thank you so much for letting me introduce myself. You guys are all incredible. It's also my brother's birthday. Oh, he just left. <laughs> it's my brother's birthday today. He's 17. Today's his birthday? Yeah, today's his birthday. We have a fire performance right now. Just really quickly, I wanted to thank you for helping with the Santa event. I thought that was really cool. And I think the um, young individuals in that really enjoyed seeing our Miss Murray and our little miss. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank so you. Much, thank you, Emma. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Now, Murray City Council Employee of the Month, and it's really Murray City Council and the Mayor's Employee of the Month, Rob White, IT, and I'll be right there. No, Rob had nothing to do with that. That didn't work. So don't be trying to put that on Rob. Uh, of, course, <laughs> of course it didn't work. I know, know huh? Not, yeah. Isn't that great? Right. Diane, can I go ahead for you real quick? Or do you oh, want, yeah. You want to do um, <laughs> there you are, Rob. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well, I've known Rob since I started eight, almost nine years ago. Oh, my goodness. And what a great guy. Whenever I have any questions, any IT questions, either he or his staff, always are so helpful and just warm. And anyway, I just thank you so much for, for always being there. So, and um, you want to give him this? Sure, you can give that. All right. <laughs> okay, we're very organized here. So, we've been doing this for a while with the council. Um, Bob's name will be up in the way of the year or month yeah, forever. Year. Upgraded. I know. <laughs> Boy, man, he's never going to forget, let's forget that now. I know. That's $50 times 12. <laughs> I was like, there goes the council budget. Thanks, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> We're done this year. <laughs> That's true. We've been doing this for a long time. In fact, Mayor Hales was the one who started it. Uh, and it just says, presented to Rob White with great appreciation and gratitude for outstanding crisis management, valuable skill set, critical problem solving, quality attention to detail, and strong leadership. Um, also, I know who I can give this to. <laughs> this is a fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that elicited a smile. Anyway, a uh, fifty dollars gift certificate. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it. So anyway. thank you so much. I appreciate. It. Thank you. No, he's not leaving. And now his his boss needs to talk about him. <laughs> his boss. He's my boss. I'll tell you that. <laughs> You got to have IT be your boss, or you're in trouble. Uh, we are just grateful, Rob. You've done a great job. Come, you're a little come out further. Sorry. Oh, you know, he asked me. He said, "Brett, will you say a few things about me?" And no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, Carrie. No, nah, not true. But we all know that Rob and his team did a great job uh, this past year and has worked hard and long and spent many hours here. And uh, really, and, and Diane is correct. It's, I've worked uh, a few places, but the one, I, well, anyway, it, I've, I worked at a place a long time and the IT people are great, but I'm telling you, they don't match what we have here. Uh, they're kind here. Rob and the, the group, really, you call them up and they treat you really good. Most of the IT people that I worked with would say, well, did you turn your caps on? And I'm going like, oh, did I thought I did. Did you shut down your and, computer and restart it? Yeah, did you restart it, reboot? Well, look at this. This wasn't done, you know. And or, here, do you want me to help you? Oh, move out of the way. Anyway, and these guys don't do it. They are so awesome. They're kind and, and really they're fun to work with. They're a great group. And Rob gets a lot of credit for that because that's the way he wants this department run. He really does. He wants this department to run uh, well, but also to be kind to everyone, which is a, a huge compliment to Rob on that. We recognize Carrie, his wife, who's it, it, right. Carrie, you shook your head at me. And I thought, no, I'm just, I'm thinking like, well, he's been speaking about a Carrie for all these years. So I, oh. <laughs> Anyway, it's very, very complimentary about you, Carrie, and and uh, and you guys got to have that great trip. We did. And then did. I know you're going somewhere else with the kids. Yeah. That'll be fun. You guys, anyway, we appreciate you, Rob, and uh, uh, I, I know the council appreciates you, and uh, you've done a great work for Murray City, and we're just grateful for everything you do. And like I said, you're always kind and and quick to come and respond and. We appreciate it. We, we as a city and council appreciate it. So thank you, Rob. Yes. 
and Rob, I just wanted to say really quickly that, um, you know, after the crisis that we had, I feel like I put you through the ringer with questions as we met and I, you handled it cool and had responses and, and were able to handle everything. So very impressive. You don't usually see that in times when things are really stressful with, especially in this department, in this area, it's a very challenging area today. And so a testament to you all and your team and how you handled that. It was great. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I, I appreciate this award and and i'm I'm very blessed by it and and I'm very humbled thank you council and mayor and and everyone but i i I have to give the credit to my staff. They worked tirelessly during that crisis and um you know we worked long hours and they they put in the time they put in the effort they put in uh you know just yeah, when we were on empty, we still just kept going and we were able to get things going. And it took time, but everyone was so kind, uh, you know, here. Everyone was understanding and we were able to get through it. And uh, it was uh, it was just such a blessing. But they they really are a, a great staff. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I appreciate this award and I'm taking it really on their behalf because uh, it wasn't one person's effort. It wasn't my effort. It was Ryan's team, Ben, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, Isaac and, and everyone, even, even the programmers came over and helped out and, you know, and did that. And so did the GIS. And so we put in the hours and we were able to get through that crisis quickly and get through it because of, of, of their, their dedication and, and effort and, and a lot of prayer. Lord, I mean, I was, I was concerned <laughs> anyway, to say the least, but thank you so much for this. It is a, 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 a very kind of you and, and, and an honor to, to receive this and thank you. I wanted to, congratulations, it is very well received. And I hope you took a vac vacation afterwards. Okay, good. And this, oh, oh yes. Yeah. And the staff, you know, I know, we don't talk about it, but it is very, I'm sure it was very mentally anguish. And I hope you guys give yourself some grace Then you guys did an amazing job. So thank you so much. <sighs> okay, now we're at citizen comments. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Step to the microphone, state your name and city of residence, and fill out the required form that Jennifer has up here. Uh, this is not the public hearing. We do have one public hearing next, but this is for anyone who has a comment that you want to tell, you know, you want to tell the council about. So anyway, here we go, citizen comments. Hello. Yes. Better. My name is Lawrence Horman, as most of you know. And you may have noticed that I've been absent as of late because I have been going to city councils around the valley, trying to encourage them, as I do here, to uh, join the fight to end the homelessness in this valley and in this state. Um, <laughs> went to Sandy City tonight. I don't know how effective I was. I felt under pressure there. And mostly what I wanted to, to say here is, of course, to continue to encourage you to work with the county and the state uh, on the homeless issues. Look at things like the possibility of an authorized campground to help take people off of the streets and make it easier for everybody, both the homeless and those who are housed. But I also wanted to say thank you for making me for a lot when I come here, making me feel welcome. I do feel like home when I come back here, and I appreciate that. And if that's true, then I'm probably not homeless, technically or otherwise. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. Anyone else? Huh? Good evening, Council. Um, as a member of the press, I've always kind of appreciated, uh, for the most part, Murray's uh, efforts to be transparent. Um, there's been a lot of times where my colleagues who have other reporters in other cities have 
not appreciated the kind of uh, reception I have received here in Murray. So uh, with that being said, I want to encourage the city council to continue Murray's tradition of transparency. Now, I'm not going to say Murray can't do have areas where they could do better, but with the current vacancy on the city council, here's an opportunity for the Murray City Council to actually uh, show its transparency. Now, transparency shows its constituents, uh, the city council constituents, that they're basically accountable to, to, their, to the residents. Um, and it's also, I, I know it's kind of tedious, but it's important to that the residents of Murray trust their city council. And so this is a big uh, thing coming up that you'll decide on who fills uh, District 1's chair. Um, that being said, I would like to offer the council two suggestions that will build that transparency. The first is a disclosure of any relationship with any applicants, disclosing any personal business, um, uh, family, uh, political, any type of a relationship with that. That way, uh, those in District 1 can know uh, any relationships that the applicant might have with other members of the city council. Mm -hmm. The other is to consider uh, considering the candidate based on merit. Now, I know some of you might be familiar with the state of Utah's uh, merit hiring practices, but basing it on merit and could eliminate such things as favoritism, cronyism, uh, bias, all things that would not benefit the, the residents of District 1. And that being said, you know, basically adding merit, what is somebody's personal background experience in government and city government, actually adding a numerical value and coming up with a way of evaluating applicants in that form of manner. So I give you these two suggestions with the hopes of that. As a member of the press, I always appreciate transparency because it keeps me accurate. I can't go anything off of the public records. So, uh, and so I took, take this opportunity to address all of you in, in one setting, both the hopes that you'll consider these actions. Thank you. Sean, would you state your name and place of residence? Sean Dellis gave Murray City District Two. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, like you have been here all day, so you know who I am, but I'm Rachel Moreau, um, resident of Murray and vice president of the Historic Murray First Foundation. And I just wanted to um, take another opportunity to make a public comment for the record about how important it is to view our historic buildings, this one in particular being the one at issue um, recently, um, as potential resources current and potential resources for the community and um, not as a roadblock to bigger and denser development um, with a recognition that um, density does need to be added, but it's disheartening to always see that happening in place of our historic buildings. Um, but I do want to also take this opportunity to thank all of you for being so considerate of all the sides. I, I sit in and watch what you do in the meetings and, and the discussions that you have in your work meetings. And I know that all of this is taken into consideration and it's not a one-sided, let's drive hard in one direction um, proposition for all of you and um, for the staff for, for Jared and, and his staff and all the things that they're considering. And I did want to stand up and say, while I'm encouraging you to treat our historic buildings, all that we have left, which is diminishing in number um, with, with an eye to them as ways to continue to serve the community and to contrib contribute to our quality of life. I want to also thank you for your efforts um, on all sides and all facets of the issue. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> My name is Delyn Barney. I live in uh, Murray City in District 1. 
I've lived there since 1963. And prior to that, I lived in a home that was on the property, which is now the where the new city hall is, before my parents built the home that I'm living in now. I attended this elementary school as a child, uh, serving milk in the, uh, on the second floor and doing various other things as an elementary student before my parents built the home they did. And I attended Murray Junior High School or Hillcrest Junior High School, Murray High School, and I attended the uh, a church that has just been recently torn down and a new, new building put up. Since living here, there's been quite a significant change in the structure of the neighborhood that I live in. It was residential when I moved in. Now it's pretty much industrial. Uh, this is one of the few facilities that's remaining in the, in the city that is, has any historical significance, and I would like to see it preserved. One note of interest, and I didn't realize it until I heard the person's name, the uh, new uh, Miss uh, Murray, Utah, is her last name is Robinson. The people that owned the property before my parents built it was Martha and Edward Robinson. I don't, I doubt there's any relationship, but it's interesting to have that same name. As far as I could tell from genealogical records, they only had one son and he passed away. And I don't know if there's any other family members in this area that are related to them, but they came here from Switzerland. But back to the original process, the concept is I would like to see this building maintained as a historical building and preserved. It's one of the few places that is still left in this city. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, when the uh, new city hall gets finished, I will be in walking distance of it. So when I want to come to a meeting, I don't have to drive over. I'm less than a block and a half away, which is a good thing or a bad thing. But so thank you again for your time. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Delyn. Any more comments? All right. We'll close citizen comments. We don't have a consent agenda, so we'll go to public hearings. We have one public hearing. And Jared? Jared Hall will be presenting. I guess I should state that this is to consider an ordinance relating to land use, which amends the general plan from low density resi residential to neighborhood business and amends the zoning map from R18, which is residential low density, to RNB, which is residential neighborhood business, for the property located at 97 West Winchester Street, Murray, Utah. Thank there you. you go, Jared. Thank you. So I won't repeat the address because you just did it for me. So that's perfect. But it is this piece of property right here that's at the corner where Winchester Street intersects Maelstrom Lane. Um, this particular piece of property is used right now as a home. Uh, it's in a residential area. You can see across the street, across Winchester, this is the edge of um, a, a series of office condominiums that were built in the R&B zone as well. Uh, they are in that, that pink that you can see is the R&B zone. The property that's at issue tonight in this hearing is uh, in the R18 zone currently. Right here is a section of the future land use map <clears throat> and a section of the zoning map. Uh, there, on the top, you can see the future land use map. Um, this pink color indicates um, neighborhood, sorry, neighborhood, neighborhood business. Couldn't get that word out of my mouth for some reason. That category supports certain zoning classifications. One of them is uh, the RNB zone. As you can see, the property, the subject property is just outside of that classification area. This is the general plans map that's supposed to guide what we do with our future decisions for zoning. Uh, the applicant in this case is in the R18 zone. You can see the, R the RNB zone that he's asking for versus the R18 zone on the other side of Malmstrom. All of these properties along here are slated to go to the R&B zone if they request that change. Um, he's asking to expand that 
uh, classification that would support the zone change, one more property to his property would be included and then rezoned subsequently to RNB. Um, hoping that makes sense. Um, it does to me, but I look at it all day, every day, so I like to make sure that it makes sense. Future land use map supports it. He's asking for a change there to support a change to the zoning, the end result being an RNB zone. Well, what does that mean? Is currently used right now for residential purposes. The RNB zone would allow him to convert the home or build a new building and use that for an office. Um, we believe his intent was to move his property management company there. We had some conversations about that. Uh, the future land use designations that we were just talking about, again, low density residential is what's currently there. Residential business would support uh, some, it still supports residential uses, but it also allows for some very light duty commercial uses. The RNB zone is written specifically to be used as a buffer between areas like Winchester Street that carries a lot of traffic and residential areas that are stable behind that frontage. It's used a lot on Winchester Street and in Ninth East in our city currently. Um, in that regard, it makes some sense for this particular property. I wanted to go over really quickly a couple of the changes or the differences between the two zoning regulations. As I said, the RNB zone will allow some commercial development. It is limited. The, the, use, the use categories are, are less uh, intense than in a standard business zone. So you have allowances for small offices like dental, um, for small restaurants even, but with limited hours. And the buildings are limited for height, etc. So the height in the RNB zone is actually less than in the R18 zone. 20 feet uh, is the standard and the planning commission when it's reviewing new projects can allow up to 30, but that's still five feet less than the residential zone allows. Uh, the other setbacks are pretty similar. We do try in the RNB zone to have the projects, um, if there's new buildings, be out toward the street with the, with the parking behind so that the residential that they're trying to buffer is less impacted by the building. Um, and then again, um, Sorry, it's not really in the zoning table here, but there are a lot of differences in the RNB zone. It allows for commercial, but it requires that that commercial structure be small in scale and that it have residential um, architectural features. We don't allow flat roofs. They have to be pitched in some way, gables, um, residential looking windows, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really a transition zone that's being asked for. Um, looking back at these plans again, one of the ways that we consider as a staff uh, requests like this is what we call natural expansion. What the applicant is asking for is a natural expansion of that already designated residential business category onto his property. Um, sometimes when we look at them as natural expansions, we worry that it's going to go further and that other properties would fall to and we've only designated these. In the case of this property, staff felt like Maelstrom Lane kind of um, created a natural boundary there. And this property having frontage on Winchester would be eligible for that argument. So we are, as a staff, recommending uh, approval of both of those requests and allowing the rezone of the property to RNB zoning. The Planning Commission um, held a public hearing and voted to approve this change as well. Um, so we are, with that, I'll, I'll leave it to questions from you. We're recommending approval of both of those requested changes. Do you have any questions for staff? I don't think so. Is there a sponsor? An applicant, the applicant? I, yeah. I don't know if he's here or not. Yes. Would you like to speak? Uh, I'm Paul Henderson. I reside in Bluffdale, Utah, but my business currently is located in Midvale and we are looking to move to Murray. Uh, we bought this house we called the city first to see if it was zoned for it and they told me yes because everything on winchester is and then through a series of microscopes and and magnifying glasses they figured out that this actual partial was not and so i there's there was a little bit of confusion in some people i talked to the neighbors specifically to the east of the property thinking that property management is property maintenance and there would be trucks and trailers and machinery. And that's not at all what it is. We manage residential rentals. So it is, we have a few sedans that will park in the back and it's seven employees in my business that would be coming and going each day. We are there from nine to five, Monday through Friday. So uh, very reasonable to be in a neighborhood like that. We are not planning to make any major structural changes, uh, giving it a paint job, doing some landscaping, uh, putting in a parking lot. Commercial code requires that we put up a new fence around the property, so that's in the plans as well. Um, but that's, that's about it. 
Any okay. other questions for me? I don't think so. I think I have a question for Jared, though. Sorry. No, thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate yes, that. Yes, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the conditional uses if we were to approve? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just glad your question wasn't why your your recommended wording there is to recommend approval to yourselves. This is the wrong, <laughs> wrong slide deck. I have an updated one. It's not the one that made it onto the slide. You want me to read this? I can yeah, read no, that okay. for you, Jared. That's it's right. been a long day for all of us. Because you can I'll help you out. You <laughs> so conditional uses in the uh, in the uh, RNB zone just include things like um, like I was talking about offices for dental. Restaurants are conditional uses. We don't. What's more kind of notable is what's not allowed in the RNB zone is conditional uses. There's no service stations, gas uh, gas stations, service stations. Those are too loud convenience stores. Those cause too much ruckus. The the allowed uses are all low traffic kind of uses like like Mr. Anderson was talking about. Um, office uses are kind of the, the norm. Um, that's really all. It's a small list. Um, beauty parlors are allowed, limited limited op, limited hours of operation, et cetera, conditional. But everything would have to be closed down like at 10. So it can't yeah, be like no, a hours, restaurant or a it can, Starbucks. It, it could be a restaurant, but a Starbucks wouldn't work. Uh, the hours are limited between 7.30 and 10 p.m. Okay. So in most businesses, we don't do that. Um, the CDs on along State Street, you can be open 24 hours, not in the R&B. You have to be closed by 10. So it's not attractive to a lot of restaurants or to anybody uh, that needs to be open any later. Um, some of the other uses, some of the service uses we don't allow. Contractors, for example, not allowed in the R&B zone. They need too much outdoor storage. We don't want that in that zoning. So okay. conditional uses are pretty limited as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. All right. I will now open this public hearing to public comment. So if there's anyone who would like to comment on this. Uh, if I can, I'd like to actually ask Jared a question. Uh, the term conditional use means that they have to have a separate application for anything that is considered conditional use as opposed to just automatic with that type of zoning, correct? Okay, I only ask because it's some of the thing I've been dealing with is uses and conditional uses for property. Thank you. All right, any other comments, questions? Okay, I will close the public hearing and send it to the council for further questions or a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve an ordinance relating to land use that amends the general plan from low density residential to neighborhood business and amends the zoning map from R18 residential low density to RNB residential neighborhood business for the property located at 97 West Winchester Street, Murray, Utah. I will second that. Very good. Is there a discussion on the motion? No. Nope. Chair, okay. do you want to read your recommendations? Just kidding. <laughs> Brooke, would you call the roll? Aye. 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 Thank okay. You. Done with the public hearings. Now we're at business items. The first one is to consider a resolution authorizing the execution of an interlo interlocal cooperation agreement between the city, Salt Lake County, Layton City, and Salt Lake City for administering and managing certain law enforcement software services. Craig Burnett is the one who is presenting. Thank you. Uh, just for the general knowledge, what we're looking for is uh, approval to enter into an agreement with Salt Lake County, which is uh, the district attorney's office, to be able to take part in their software in, that would help us with investigating uh, mainly electronic uh, type of evidence, phones, uh, social media. Uh, it's, a, it's a program that they house that we have to have. Uh, warrants for to uh, even to access, but uh, for specific types of investigations that assist in helping gather information and putting it all in one platform. So they they have the 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 program, they have the equipment. They're just allowing us to uh, be a partner and have a terminal here in Murray to uh, use that, utilize that information when uh, allowed by by the court. What is the cost? Will cost us thirty nine hundred dollars a year, which 
Money well spent. Yes, it's a lot cheaper than if we were to try to do something like that on our own. Yeah, that's for sure. And that's just annual an annual uh, pay for the uh, the license for for our end use. Great, and we had uh, quite a discussion in the committee <clears throat> of the whole about this as well. So, thank you. You bet. All right. Are there any questions? Any further discussion? From the council? Okay. If not, I would appreciate a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve a resolution authorizing the execution of an interlocal cooperation agreement between the city, Salt Lake County, Layton City, and Salt Lake City for administering and managing certain law enforcement software services. I will second. Right. You can second too, Diane. <laughs> uh, well, I'm <laughs> All right. Is there discussion on the motion? No. no. Okay. Brooke, would you take the vote? Aye. 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 Okay. This is going fast. We're on the second business. Three council people. That's why. I know. I had to make up for committee of the whole. So. <laughs> All right, on the second business item, we are to consider a resolution authorizing the execution of an interlocal cooperation agreement between the Board of Education of Granite School District and Murray City relating to a school resource officer provided by the city to the district. Chief Burnett. And I'm back. <laughs> This is uh, an agreement. It's just an update uh, of an agreement for uh, us to have a school resource officer, one of our police officers that uh, uh, is at Cottonwood High School, which is in Granite School District. And this is the agreement that would, uh, a working agreement between us and the district as to what they expect from us and what we're willing to do and uh, allows them to reimburse the city uh, for that officer I think it's forty-five thousand dollars a year, so it's an increase from what they have been uh, been paying us. So it's yes, it's a, it's one of our bodies that is in their school, but they are uh, reimbursing or giving us some money for that, and it's uh, it tends to be a very good uh, program for us to have an officer there uh, for the safety and security of the students, and just to to be there and be able to interact with uh, the students and the and the administration. So we're just looking for that agreement so we can move forward continue yes great sounds good any questions for the chief i just wanted to ask this again how much are we receiving from granite school district to have an officer there currently twelve thousand, and this uh, agreement well, would increase. increase that to 45 and okay. that's that's what they're paying their officers and other uh, schools. the other schools in uh, in their district so. okay perfect thank you all right. Okay. There are no further questions, then I would consider a motion. I will do it this time, Gary. Don't Go worry. Go ahead. <laughs> I will motion that we consider resolution. Wait, that's the next one. Consider resolution authorizing the execution of an interlocal cooperation agreement between the Board of Education of Granite School District and Murray City relating to the school resource officer provided by the city to the district. I'll second. All right. Is there discussion on the motion? No. No. Okay. Brooke, would you take the vote? Aye. 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 Okay. It passes unanimously. Now we are at number three. To consider a resol resolution to acknowledge completion and receipt of the independent audit for fiscal year 2022, 2021 and 2022, and direct that notice be published pursuant to section 10-6-152 of the Utah Code. Brenda Moore presenting. Hi, as we discussed in Committee of the Whole, the audit has been completed. We um, again had a clean audit, few adjustments, but not nothing nothing that the auditor was um uh worried about to just oversights on some 
my part mostly. <laughs> um, so um, anyway, so the resolution before you is a uh, required by state law. Um, the audit that we have every year is required by state law. Um, we had HBME um, perform the audit. Uh, they, he presented to you. Um, it is. It will be on the website tonight or tomorrow morning. And then, um, if anybody's interested in reading it, um, and then this resolution is just uh, acknowledging that um, the audit has been completed and that you have received it. And um, we will publish a notice, and then I will send a copy to the state auditor's office um, along with some other. Uh, certifications that the mayor and I need to do. So um, that's what this resolution is about. Thank you. And the auditor who we talked to in the Committee of the Whole was very impressed. He loves Murray and he loves our <laughs> our um, our people that that do our our Yeah, my staff is very good and they are um, they're the reason that we are that we do so well. Um, very responsible, very accurate, lots of attention to detail, which is what you want in a good accountant. Yep, you guys are awesome. With that, are there any questions? I just have a comment as the CPA sitting up here, and um, I just wanted to um, say how impressive it was going through everything with the um, partner from HM or HBME, and just how complimentary he was of everything you all are doing. Audits are really hard. I did them for nine years on the auditor side, not on the recipient side, and being on the recipient side is as hard, if not harder. Um, so I, um, I can appreciate three clean opinions, I believe is what we had yes. in, the, in the report. And um, it's a testament to you, Brenda, and the excellent leadership as well as your team under you. And so thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Congratulations, Brenda. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Brenda. All right. With that, I will send it to the council for a motion. I'll make a motion that we adopt a resolution to acknowledge completion and receipt of the independent audit for fiscal year 2021 to 2022 and direct that notice be published pursuant to section 10-6-152 of the Utah Code. I will second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? No. No? All right. Brooke, would you call the roll? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, fourth is election of a city council member to serve as council vice chair for the remainder of the calendar year 2022. Uh, we had our council member, Kat Martinez, uh, she left us, and so that leaves, I was the vice chair, so that leaves me to take over the chair, and now I need a vice chair, and so that's what this is about. So I will open nominations for council vice chair. Gary? I nominate you to be vice chair for the remaining three weeks of the year. I accept your nomination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need to second it. Yeah, you need it. I will second it. And I accept. The Perfect. Nomination. Yay. Oh, yes. Let's vote, anyways. Uh, Brooke, would you call the roll? Aye. Uh, aye. <laughs> aye. All right, thank you. I can use the help. Perfect. <laughs> okay, it's the mayor's report and questions from the council. Long day, huh? Yeah, mayor, <laughs> would you touch on the Christmas event? Because I, I was really, the, I'm sorry, but the advertising for it did not do that event justice. With a little mm -hmm. fire we got, I did not realize it was everything it was. From the choir here to I, just pretty yeah. pretty remarkable. So will you speak to that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely, thanks, Gary. <clears throat> we had our Christmas lighting uh, last just Saturday. Saturday. Is that correct? <clears throat> and uh, we had a huge, huge turnout. It was impressive. Uh, so 
they said that they would have, uh, I shouldn't even tell you this, but they said I would have a button. It's probably going to be fake. I didn't even get a button. I just went, bing, and they went on. That's our power department. They made him go on. So I said, next year, let's at least fake it, fake it. It looked like I pushed something. Yeah, like levers yeah or, something. or someone said to do like Christmas vacation. I haven't even seen it, so know? I'm like, you don't sure, can it. you don't admit it? that. Man. Don't admit, I'm sorry. I'll watch it tonight. Anyway, uh, so the lights went on. Santa Claus met us from the, uh, came out from the fire. In a fire uh, truck. A fire it was engine. very cool. And Miss Murray and, and little Miss Murray were there to greet us and uh, greet Santa. And uh, Santa, you know, it's interesting. I guess Santa is real because he looked at me and said, hi, Mayor. Winked, says, hi, Brat. I have no clue who he is. I was, so it's Santa. So so we came, we came up. Uh, uh, had um, a Hillcrest Junior High conducted by Mrs. Elder, who has done that for uh, our kids. Are she's been there at least twenty five years because our kids had her, and she was amazing. Uh, and the kids were really the singing was phenomenal. They they were for junior high. I was very impressed. Uh, they sat up and I have some pictures and we'll show you. But they sat up on our the dais here they thought it was pretty cool and the, the young man that was sitting as mayor was going like this <laughs> i'm over there going like wow he's relaxed and uh but then they would swap and they did a great job it was phenomenal everyone that uh, was involved with it, mainly our power department they 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 ran that and we we're grateful for them but it was it's a an amazing tradition that murray city has done for years and uh it was it was fun i mean the, the kids it, it, I think the line lasted at least two hours. It was wild. When I came, I was out there watching the tree, and there was a lot of people around the tree. I was like, this is very cool. And then I hear all this noise out of the side, and I look, and there are people lined all the way down by the post office waiting yeah, they, to get they in. Had been we had to move them finally in here down it's by crazy. IT. So it was cool. Anyway, so it's a, it's a great Murray tradition and uh, lighting of the Christmas tree. So thanks, Gary. Okay, so a couple things. Um, we now, I, I was going to announce this, I'm still going to announce this because I have a lot of faith that the county is going to, it's probably already done by now, but we are going to receive some grants uh, next month and uh, for uh, one of, from for our TRCC, the, the uh, what does that stand for? Let me look. I, mean, I know I have that. Hold on just a minute. Hold just a minute. Say it. Whoever's saying that over there. Oh, tourism, recreation, culture, uh, and convention. I know. Who was saying that, Patty? I'm impressed, Patty. You're hired. Okay. Um, so anyway, we will. We will. We're, we're planning on receiving uh, two grants. Uh, one for seven hundred fifty-eight thousand and something dollars, and that will be for the mansion museum. And then uh, for a new playground that's going to be over uh, Pavilion Five, uh, we're receiving a hundred thousand for that. Oh. So, um, like I said, pending on the county's vote tonight. Uh, were you going to ask something, Gary? Oh, and then I'm proud to, if I can do this. You know, this is not my cup of tea, but I'm going to try this. I'm going to show you what's taking place. All right, here we go. Let's see how good I am. I'm not good. What what is this? What conf is this conference 107, Patty? Or council chamber? I got it. Council chamber. Is there a code up there? No code came up. Mm -mm. Oh, Jared, I'm so excited to show these. Don't get excited yet, because I want to show these. Not my bag. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I can't. Usually the code comes up. Okay, yeah, you tell me. Should I cancel it or? No. Okay, leave it. So we all can have your code. Yeah, it's your. It's just the code that comes up. What is it? Six two three five. Okay. You know, it would be really neat if I knew if there was like a place to put the code in, like on my phone. <laughs> I, I mean, it comes up, but there's no. Let's try this again. Okay. <laughs> If if I'll just tell you about if it, okay, came up a new one. <laughs> How come I don't have a place to put it? There's no uh, numbers. It just says. That is sad. 
It's okay, we have IT here to help oh, and assist. Ben, how do I do this? I just want to show you something. Bear with me. Okay, so Ben, I just want to... I feel much better now. But even IT can't do it. Now you might get it. Boy, this ought to be good. Oh, really? Diana? <laughs> not bringing up our keyboard, but mm. I'll just tell you if I can't get it. No worries. Ooh, ooh. Oh, try one more time. <laughs> Maybe we waited too long. No. No, I, there's no keyboard to put it in. Hey. Okay. This phone just doesn't bring up the keyboard. Anyway, so I'll, I'll speak into over. the mic, please. I'll just know. I'm going to take come over here real quick. Here, here, son. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to show you we have, and we'll show you anybody who wants to see them, but you'll just have to imagine our new seats are in for the amphitheater. Oh, I was so you. excited to show you. Oh, wow. Very nice. Let yeah. me see. Let me see. Like a real stadium. It's wow. Like a Look, what do they have? Ooh, cup holders. <laughs> that was... That's too bad because now Lincoln can't fall asleep. That's what bench. Cindy Hales required was cup holders. <laughs> so we made it. Anyway, so we have brand new... You're not going to be able to see it, but we have brand new seats that are in our amphitheater. So Yay. we're just, we're just psyched. Awesome. It's going to be great. Anyway. That's awesome, man. It didn't work like I wanted it to. That's okay. <laughs> Best laid plans. I know. So anyway, that'll be exciting. So that'll be up and going. They'll be all in in the next couple of weeks. And the coming year, we'll have our brand new stadium seats with cup holders. So we're excited, and we're gonna have a. We're gonna start using that. We're What's excited. What's the maximum capacity? It is. Kim, do you eight? know? <laughs> no, it's for the amphitheater. That's the theater. You're six twenty. Six twenty. What was it before? Oh, About the same. Oh, nice. And we added cup holders. <laughs> we added cup holders. Yeah, really. Now we just need to Aren't work on some other codes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. So thank you. One last thing I wanted. I On Saturday before the tree lighting, I went over to the 20th celebration at the Park Center. And thank that you. was a great event. Um, saw Doug over there. So um, really, really nice. Great seeing all the staff there. The rubber duck races were fun around the pool. That's and great. so um, I encourage anyone who has not yet enjoyed the Park Center. It's actually really nice. And there's a lot to do. Yeah. We, we have a new uh, director uh, of the Park Center. And, and she's just... She's doing a phenomenal job. Who's the new director again? <laughs> Kim. Her name is Jennifer Leitner. Jennifer Leitner? Okay. She's six foot two. Hey, I wasn't going to say it. I was going to let you go there, but she is tall. She's <laughs> she taller is. than me. And she is tall, tall, isn't she? It's yeah. Awesome. She played volleyball for, I, I don't know, I think BYU. Yeah, see, Tammy didn't want me to say some school down south, but some school down south that Doug loves. But anyway... So uh, great. She's a uh, came from the county and she's phenomenal. So anyway, that's, that's awesome. it. Thank you. Hey, and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We'll, this we'll is, still see each other. We, we will. Time. But I wish Murray City a, a oh, happy yes. holidays. It's, it's, a, it's a great time of year. And I've noticed that there's more. I think because this is my own personal opinion, because of the pandemic, people are putting lights up, celebrating a little earlier. And it's just kind of an exciting time to have the pandemic hopefully continue out and uh, and we get to have a wonderful holiday season. So anyway, <laughs> thanks. Our next council <laughs> meeting will be in January. So everyone, happy holidays. And I would like a motion to close this meeting. I'll make a motion that we close the meeting. I will second that. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, would you? Aye. We don't need a vote, or we do? Aye, yes. Let's cancel the meeting. End the meeting. Adjourn. We're going to adjourn. <laughs> we are adjourned. Aye. It's a long day.